I asked a lot of people um, on my Instagram to send me some questions that they would like to ask me about our wedding, about planning it, about aspects of getting married, anything like that. And one of the first questions we got um, was how did we know when it was the right time to get married? Now, this is a hard one because I think everyone is different, but something that we definitely felt really strongly about was um, Josh, my husband, he worked at McDonald's pretty much all through our dating. So we, he knew he didn't want to get engaged or get married until he had a proper job in a career that he really wanted and felt that that was his career for life. So pretty much as soon as he got his first job in that field, he proposed. I think he accepted the job and then it was our anniversary three days later so then three days later, he proposed <laughs> together because um, I think that it's a big strain when you both live with your parents and move in together financially to un start to understand, okay, we've got to pay for our food, we've got to pay our bills, we've got to do all of this. And we wanted to make sure we were able to do that in a good way and we were able to financially afford to live by ourselves without our parents' help. So that was a main one. Another thing was we just knew that we wanted to spend the rest of our lives with each other. And we just thought, you know, we are quite young and we were really young when we got married. I think we were 19 when we got engaged and we were 20 when we got married. So we were very young, but we also met very young. We also had so many conversations about our future um, and our relationship and the future of our relationship. So we spent a lot of time talking. So we were kind of, we knew we were both on the same page with where we wanted to be with that. So it wasn't really a hard decision to make because we both knew we were on the same page, which made it a lot easier to decide when to get married. But definitely the main thing was Josh's job. We knew that once he got that job in the career that he wanted, that was a good sign for us to start preparations to get married. So we did, we got Our engaged. engagement period was a year. Um, now I really, really wanted to make sure that we didn't have a long engagement. I really didn't want a long engagement. Or I, I want a year to plan our wedding and then I want to get married. I wanted to get on with it straight away, which I know a lot of people also feel. So, so that was our engagement. Now, one of the things that I really wanted was to have an engagement shoot. One, because Josh isn't really a fan of having his photo taken. He's a lot better now than he was then, but back then he really hated it. So I thought, let's have an engagement shoot. One, so that Josh can kind of get used to the situation of having his photo taken. And two, so that we can have some really nice pictures for our wedding, for our, our engagement. Um, so we actually found a package deal with our photographer who did a free engagement shoot. I don't think he does this anymore, but he, at the time he did a free engagement shoot included in the package for our wedding day. So we got to choose a location and a date and he would meet us there, take loads of pictures for us, edit them, send them to us. And that would kind of be our pre-wedding shoot, our engagement shoot. And I actually really loved that. It gave Josh and I a chance to kind of get to meet the photographer, build a relationship with him, get to know him a little bit before he comes to our wedding. Because I think it's always kind of a bit awkward to have like meet the person for the first time at your wedding day. It can be a little bit awkward. So it was nice for us to understand how he works, for him to understand what we're like and be able to have that moment before our actual wedding. That was really good. So I really recommend doing that if you can. Also, um, a photographer slash videographer is probably the only part of the wedding that I will say to you, do not scrimp. Like, do your wedding. If you want to do your wedding as cheap as possible, that's brilliant. But what I would say is do not scrimp on the cost of a photographer or a videographer because no matter what you sacrifice for your wedding day um, and no matter how cheaply you do things, you want the photos of it to be really good. So you want to be able to remember the day and have the photos for the rest of your life to look back on and it's something really important. Well, it was for me anyway. <laughs> um, uh, so choosing a date, and I've put in here and the dreaded word money. Like, I think that so many people avoid getting married these days because a wedding costs so much and they want it to be perfect and they don't have the money to spend on their wedding. 
and I totally understand that. Josh and I, Josh had only just started his new job, um, but pretty much all of his salary from his new job was going towards our wedding. And we also had a lot of help from my parents. So my parents paid for our whole reception and everything to do with our reception. And Josh and I paid for everything else. So the church, the flowers, the rings, the dress, um, the hair and makeup, the um, decorations, like, oh my gosh, everything. We literally paid for everything else. So it was really helpful that my parents were able to help us out because we wouldn't have been able to have the wedding that I really wanted if we didn't have help from my parents. So before I go into this, I actually want to mention I used the most amazing app to plan my wedding. Like, I all, I am all for organising. I love being organised. I love being planned and I love planning things. But this, I would totally recommend if you are planning a wedding to get an app because it will help you keep on top of things so the app that i got i will actually insert now um some clips of it but it's called wed happy um, and you go in you just put in all of your details about your wedding when your wedding day is um you as the bride your husband as the groom and then you basically can track all of your tasks so it shows you all of the different categories of tasks from bakeries to DJs to venues to dresses to tuxes to flowers to rings absolutely every aspect of your wedding that you're going to have to plan and it splits it in, in your wedding day it will do a countdown of how many days that there is until your wedding and then it will show you all of the tasks that you need to complete and give you timeline for when you need to complete each task and then you can tick them off um, which I found super helpful. As soon as I'd done something or planned something or wrote something in or anything like that, I would tick off a task so that I knew that it was completed and I didn't have to worry about it. But also you can add your own tasks. So if I needed to follow it up, I would write a task and set a date for what I needed to follow it up. It also in this app, which I love, has a payment section so you can track all your payments you can add payments to different vendors and you can keep an eye on how much you're spending and keep an eye on your budget um, this i also found incredibly helpful so i would really really recommend this app there are tons of apps that you can use but i use this one and i absolutely loved it so please if you are planning a wedding please check it out um, if you don't like this one there are so many others that you can use but i do really recommend using an app Okay, so I was asked this question on my Instagram. Um, how did we manage expectations slash differences in opinion with parents? So my parents had a lot more say than Josh's, um, just purely because Josh's parents were really chill about it. Our wedding was in Swindon, not in Harlington where Josh's parents live. So everything was happening around where my myself and my parents lived and not where Josh lived. So it was very hard for Josh's parents to get involved just purely because nothing was happening around them but any opportunity that I could get involved with Josh's family I tried like I would invite them down to see the venue and invite them to my dress fittings and things like that um, what I will say is it's your wedding so as much as people like to give opinions and as much as people like to input make sure you stick with your gut and what you want to do and what feels right for you I think that a wedding is something that so many people have an opinion on and so many people are involved and invited. It can just become a very overwhelming for a bride and a groom. So I would say the main thing for me that I learn is stick to your guns, like go with what you want to do because it's your wedding day. And ultimately you're the one that's going to look back at your wedding and be happy or sad about how it went. Not many other people are going to look back at it and notice all the little details that like you would. And I think for me on my wedding day, there was nothing that didn't go how I wanted it to, really. Because I'd planned the whole thing and because I made sure I was firm with what I wanted, the wedding day turned out exactly how I wanted. And there were a few things on the way that were a bit hard, a few bumps and stuff that we had to go over with my family, a few differences that were hard to deal with. But I would say ultimately it's your wedding. Try to be as respectful and loving towards the people around you because 
you know, you don't want to have any bad relationships or bad vibes when you're about to get married and move out, especially with your parents. So I would say try to be as involving as you can and as, and as people want to be involved. But I would say make sure that ultimately you have the final decision because it's your wedding, not theirs. Um, but be respectful of, you know, people who are giving money and time and giving their stuff to be able to bless you. Be respectful of that and be thankful, but also be firm with your decisions. I would say that's really important. Parents are amazing and parents are such a blessing. And I think our wedding would not have been what it would have been without my parents. You know, they helped us out massively financially and we would not have been able to do it with So I had a question about what your, what my planning timeline was like. So this obviously goes back to the app, like, but I started planning our wedding pretty much as soon as we got engaged. I did little things like ordering gifts for bridesmaids, asking my bridesmaids to be my bridesmaids. Um, I did lots of little bits like that as soon as we got engaged. Um, and, then, and then followed the app for the rest of it. So I definitely started as soon as we got engaged and finished about a week before we got married. What was the most stressful part to organize? Organize. Mm, I would say the most stressful part purely because of the location differences of my family and Josh's family was definitely the dress fittings. So I had four bridesmaids. I had, um, I'll insert a picture here. I had my best friend, Abby, um, who lives in Marlow, which is um, near Reading, near Maidenhead area. I then have my older sister, Megan, who obviously lived with me. Um, and then I had Josh's two younger sisters, Hope and Hannah, who obviously lived with Josh, which was two hours away. So I would say the most stressful part to organize was definitely the dress fittings and getting all of that done. Um, but I gave myself a lot of time um, intentionally because I knew it would be difficult and I knew we would have a lot of time barriers. So I made sure that we started, I started planning the dresses way earlier than I needed to because I wanted to make sure we had time to get all those fittings in. So I think I started planning our dresses. I think I started looking for my dress in February and I started um, our first meetup, I think for dress fittings with everyone was April and that's where we chose our bridesmaids dresses and did all of that, which I will insert pictures from. I'm sure I've got tons of pictures of all of these situations. So I will insert photos of that here. Um, but we had so much fun. That is something I will say. Dress fittings, bridesmaid dress fittings, all of that is so much fun. Every single time we met up and tried on dresses and had our fittings, it was just so wonderful. And I was very, very blessed because my bridesmaids were all really happy to pay for their own dresses. So that was a cost that Josh and I didn't have to incur. Um, and we got really nice dresses. Like they did pay a lot of money for their dresses. Um, but hopefully they all feel it was worth it, even though they probably have all only worn them once. Um, but I'm very grateful that I have friends and siblings that are willing to pay and help that much towards it because it did really help us out because I wanted everyone to look the same and I wanted everyone to be happy with it and I wanted them to fit everyone perfectly. So I would say from choosing my dress to our final fitting, it was probably February 2017 until September 2017. Was held at the Swindon Marriott Hotel. Um, we got a hotel package deal. Um, I think we got the highest, the premium package, which included a meal, a three course meal for everyone. Um, it included decorations, it included a cake stand, it included all of our chair ribbons. Um, it included a discount for all our hotel guests, for people that were coming from afar, needed a place to stay. Um, it included so much. <laughs> um, one of the questions I got was how many guests were there. So we had about 100 people to our reception. I think we had maybe 300 to 400 people come to our ceremony. But our ceremony was in a church, so it was very open. I'll insert some pictures. Um, it was very open, so anyone could come to that. So I had a lot of people from my church come to that, a lot of people from um, camp and around places and places that, pe that knew us personally. A lot of people came to that um, and then we had about 100 people to our reception which was in the day which was where we had our sit down breakfast meal so 
Um, we then went off and had photos after our ceremony and everyone went back to the hotel. We then came in, had Prosecco on arrival and everyone had canapes that they could help themselves to. We then did a lot of photos on the terrace and outside the hotel bit. And then we went through into the main event room, which was where our reception happened. Um, and we greeted everyone, which I've got loads of photos from, so I'll insert them all here. We greeted everyone, went and took our seats at the top table, had our meals, which was amazing. Like, I cannot fault the Marriott. They were absolutely incredible. They took charge of everything. I was able to just completely sit back and enjoy the whole thing and not have to worry about when things were happening. The waiters and waitresses brought the food out so quickly, served everyone. The food was amazing. I, I couldn't have faulted our wedding at all. It was brilliant. And over by about an hour. So after we'd finished there, we all had to clear out, primp up. Um, Josh and I went up to our hotel room for a little bit, um, just to kind of take it all in, have a moment alone together before we then were absolutely rammed because our evening was absolutely rammed. Um, nothing can prepare me for this. Like nothing will prepare you for how busy you will be on your wedding day like nothing it was so so busy i didn't stop all day long like it was so fun but i didn't get to dance really because there were so many people at our evening reception that people were constantly coming up to me saying goodbye um, and thanking me for inviting them. I was thanking them for coming and there was just so much interaction all evening constantly that I just didn't have the. So Josh was on the dance floor having a whale of a time with his friends, loving life. And I was saying goodbye to people nonstop. <laughs> I moved the whole room around, pushed all the tables to the sides, made the dance floor in the middle, the DJ set up, they put the buffet all at the side of the room. Um, and then we had maybe 300 to 400 people in the evening. It was very, very, very busy. Um, so yeah, it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant and the best day ever. So how do we decide on our guest list? So before we thought my, before we knew my parents were paying for it, Josh and I had a very basic outline, um, which was about 80 people for the whole day. It was very basic. Um, because like only people we could afford to come. So a lot of my friends weren't gonna be invited. Um, it was just gonna be family really. Um, and then my parents said they would pay. So that gave us a lot more flexibility and we were able to invite a lot more people. Um, a lot of people um, like dropped out last minute. So we had like my cousin and his girlfriend split up. So that gave us a seat. A few people didn't end up coming. Um, we unfortunately had a couple of deaths in the family, so we then had those spaces. So we had a lot of, I mean, you can't predict these things. Like you guess are something that are really hard because it's very unreliable. Um, it moves around all the time. You get tons of yeses and then you get people dropping out gradually as your wedding starts to approach. But something we were really strict on is as soon as someone dropped out, we would have replaced them with someone else. So we had a lot of people who originally weren't invited to the day that we then were able to extend the invite and invite them to the day. But um, I think if you are planning a wedding and it is your guest list, you get the decision. It's your wedding, you decide who can come. If you are not close to that person, if you do not see them ever, if you don't have a relationship with them, don't invite them. If your pet, there's a really good, I will insert it here actually, there's a really good um, guest decider um, little thing that you can get on the internet, which basically goes through yes and no, yes and no, to help you make a final decision on your guest list. And we did this for a lot of people actually, and it was really helpful, but you obviously- You need to be firm in your opinions about who you want to invite and about your guest list, and make sure that you and your husband or husband-to-be are on the same page um, and if your family are paying a lot of money towards your wedding which ours did then having that conversation with them as well making sure they're happy with the decision that's it that's all that matters no, no one else matters I know it sounds really harsh but it's your wedding day there are so many things to worry about so many things to plan so many things to stress about it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter and it, 
ultimately it's your decision. Everything went to plan. Yeah. So my sister-in-law actually asked me, did everything go to plan? Yes, absolutely everything went to plan. There was nothing about our wedding that didn't happen. The only thing that, that probably could have gone smoother is the morning. So we actually paid to get our hair and make I paid to get my hair and makeup done at a hair salon and um, with a hairdresser that I absolutely love she is brilliant um so we all booked in there early in the morning I think about half eight we got there and my wedding started at 12 so we gave us about three and a half hours to get ready to get our hair and makeup done and it was very tight um we had we were really rushing I really didn't want to be late to our to my wedding. That was one of the things I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to be late. I really don't want to be late. Um, so there were a lot of, there was a lot of running about and quickly getting stuff done. I'll insert pictures here of us all getting ready. Um, but I had desires to all have really nice pictures together before we left for us all to sit on my parents' bed and have some cute photos. I had gifts that I wanted to give all of my bridesmaids and have photos of that as well. And none of that happened. Like it was all very rushed because I got to the point where I was like, I want to get in my dress and I want to get to the wedding. So because of that, everything went out the window and it happened so quick. Um, I ended up being 15 minutes early and we ended up driving around the block waiting for me to be able to pull up and walk down the aisle um, but yeah it was it is what it is and I look back at it and think it doesn't matter we still had some lovely photos we still had a really nice morning at the hair salon but that bit where we got back to the my parents house before we went to the wedding was very busy um, but, so what was my favorite moment my favourite moment from the wedding, there were so many. The speeches were amazing, like my dad's speech, Josh's speech, Josh's dad's speech and Caleb's speech were amazing, like I couldn't have faulted them, they were phenomenal speeches. Everyone was in tears at my brother-in-law's speech, he was so, so lovely, um, he cried a lot bless him he was very lovely and everyone was emotional at his speech but yeah the speeches were amazing I loved the speeches and um, the only thing I would say of another favorite moment was the actual ceremony the actual ceremony for our wedding was beautiful like I wouldn't have changed anything like I will say there was one moment where I sat down after we'd got married and there was something left in them that I was a bit like, why is this here? I will insert a picture of it because I think I have a photo of it being there. I don't think in the photo I'm acknowledging that it's there, but I definitely sat down thinking, why the hell is that there? That's really annoying. But then I forgot about it, so it's fine. <laughs> but it does look very random in this photo. Um, that was the only moment in our ceremony that I thought that's a bit weird that hasn't been done very well but everything else was perfect my friends did the worship um I'll insert loads of photos as I'm talking my friends did the worship um which was beautiful really really amazing yeah. a really good family friend uh, one of my really close well a group of really close friends that I've grown up with their dad he um someone who played the piano so he played my entrance and my exit which was beautiful yeah it was one uh, our whole wedding was amazing I would totally relive it if I could invitations so we got our invitations made my parents made these because they officially sent them out um so I will do a close-up shot of this but we've got all of our information in here um, it just says we love because he first loved us and um, it has my name Josh's name and then all of the details for our wedding our RSVP invite as well we also have a little card um, that just says the reception address and the church address and um, it also has a little link for the directions and a link for um, the church um, and then we also had timings for so this is an evening reception um, invite so it says that there'll be food served between 8 30 and 9 30 for a buffet for the evening it also has the discounted rates for the hotel um, it says when the evening reception will start um, I don't actually have an invite for the main but the main one 
had this um it just had the details of the day reception and then it also had another card a third card that had all the menu choices on and um, but i can put a link to that in up on the screen just from my um all my details that i've got online but yeah it just tucks in there and that was it that was our um invites so, these so we went... didn't bother sending out save the dates we just sent out these invites because I just thought let's just get the invites done and get them sent out because I wanted to be organized and it just was a lot easier than spending a lot of money on sending loads of things out so yes that is our invitation flowers I used um this company for flowers I think it's gems flowers um I had my bouquet I had a bouquet for all of my bridesmaids um what I also did to save money was to have roses, which I really, really wanted roses. But I also bulked the bouquets out with uh, gypsophilia um, because it's really cheap and it looks really nice. And it means that you don't need as many. So my bouquet, I prioritised to have the most red roses in. So my bouquet was obviously the most expensive. Um, but my bridesmaids, they only had about three white roses and the rest were gypsophilia. So my bridesmaids had um, red dresses that I also matched with the guys' suits. So um, I bought the pocket handkerchiefs and the ties I brought from the same place of where we brought our dresses so that they matched the bridesmaids dresses um, and my dress I got from Wed to Be which I really really recommend it's a brilliant um, cheap wedding dress place where you can get really really good quality dresses for like half the price I think my dress was about £600 so that's really good considering how big it was how much material there was Thank you um, so much for watching this video. If you are getting married, please let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear all of your stories about your planning faux pas, all of your stories about your planning wins. Um, please let me know in the comments. If you are engaged to getting married soon, I hope you have a wonderful wedding and please enjoy planning it. Please be organized and enjoy it. It's so much fun. I hope you have a wonderful wedding. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe and comment and I will see you in another video. Bye.